Ivy, it's been a long time since I've made a video uh, with regards to the Sanyang snipe. The last video I made was with the Hunt uh, grouping with the Web Raider, wing 177 caliber using power driver pellets at 102 meters. And um, since then, uh, I've kind of like been laying low. Uh, you know, guys like us, we do have jobs, so we're not under pressure to, to make videos every week in order to get paid by YouTube or to be paid by subscribers. So, kind of like a very proud means of saying that we are independent and uh, that we have to buy our own rifles, night vision equipment, uh, pellets, etc., etc., uh, along with all the other hunting equipment associated with this type of sport. Um, tonight I'm going to speak about the new African Air Ordnance uh, pellet uh, forward slash air bullet. Um, I had done a 132 meter testing of this particular air bullet onto a piece of pine which is 5 centimeters thick. It completely penetrated into the pine, however, it did not go right through. Drop values at 132 meters was about 130 centimeters, and uh, the rifle fired it at an average of about 921 feet per second. Uh, that was over a spread of about, I would say, six, seven shots. We actually got the, the, the velocities which these. Um, that is produced with this particular rifle. Bearing in mind it is in a 22 caliber. If you will see on some adjunct videos which I had included in this presentation, you will see that it is about one foot pound less than the Daystate 303 and it also fires them at about two foot pounds less than its sister rifle, the Eugen uh, Sumatra in 25 caliber. Uh, it matches the Evanix Rainstorm uh, 357 uh, blow for blow in terms of power output and that gun fires an anti one grain um, pellet at about also 95 foot pounds. So as far as I know this is the only 22 caliber which is able to match a 25 caliber a 303 and a 357 caliber, um, despite its diminutive size, actually. However, the length of the air bullet uh, pretty much makes up for the impact. Uh, the problem is that here in South Africa we are limited to not more than 5.56 millimeters in width uh, for uh, a projectile, which means that it should not exceed that width, actually. That is unfortunately what our law says, and after that we actually have to get a firearm certificate, or the gun has to be licensed then. So um, I think what uh, Julian King has done was uh, basically made the uh, air bullet longer, uh, increasing the length, and thereby also making sure that it has got uh, three circular splines on the bullet, which uh, grips the rifling as this rifle has a 1 in 16 twist rate. Uh, left-handed and it um, also um, allows the bullet to uh, achieve optimal spin in this barrel whereby I can achieve kind of like uh, pretty much uh, perfect uh, shots uh, right out to 132 meters. I had not done accuracy testing as yet but preliminarily they do tend to and seem to show uh, much promise actually. Um, it's got a lot of knockdown power it should be able to take out a Caracal, um, a Springbuck, a Daker, even a Blackback Jackal, right out, to what, right out to about 100 meters. I do think that uh, it, uh, a hard lung shot should be able to do the job. Uh, anything close than 50 meters you can try by, you can try for a hit shot, but it's not really going to be necessary actually. Um, Hard lung shots on these animals at that distance should be able to, to knock them out within about uh, 20 seconds. And uh, that is basically what uh, 
has maximized the potential for this rifle. I had done the chronograph testing and uh, I have to uh, apologize because what happened was uh, the battery of my camera was flat and it would record from the first shot running at 899 feet per second um, and back again to 912 but I will put a, a sheet of paper up just to show that the um, the spread of the velocity over about, I think it was something like 15 shots, um, you can actually sh see the true potential of, of what the gun actually achieved uh, at, at over the chronograph. So um, without any further ado, um, yeah, that uh, would then conclude this presentation with regards to the Sam Yang snipe shooting 51 grain um, African Air Arms uh, Air Bullets. Um, also, just as a note, I had put up a VOG 40 grain bullet, and you can see this uh, this air bullet actually towers over the um, power driver pellet in 22 caliber as well as the um, VOG um, ram fire bullet. Okay, thanks very much. Here we can see the African Air Ordnance uh, Air Slug, which weighs in at 51 grains, right next to a um, VLG uh, room fire bullet, which weighs in at 40 grains, and uh, which is in turn next to a pile driver pellet weighing in at 30 grains. These bullets come in a pack of 100. Um, on the pack, it will say they weigh in at 50 grains, but I found that about 75 to 80 percent of them weigh in at 51 grains. Uh, it's called the African Air Ordnance, and it's, um, as I said, it's made by a gentleman called Jeremy King. He is in KwaZulu Natal in South Africa, and his contact details are on the pack as well. Um, the website is africanairordnance.com and he can be contacted via email as well. 22 caliber pellets, 5.5 millimeters in width, and they do fit the Sam Yang Snipe. It's a 15 millimeter long uh, bullet. I shall now proceed to load the air bullets into the breech of the Sam Yang Snipe. 51 grain air bullets and they are 15 millimeters in length you load them like so and you just push them in okay and they will fit very nicely into the breech of the Sam Yang snipe 22 caliber Ryan's using his Air Force Air Guns Condor in 25 caliber, shooting the Predator Polymags at 1,080 feet per second, putting out 67 foot pounds of energy.
Reload, reload. Going down. Yep, he's down. He's down. Keep calling. side of the road from us, down them bottoms. Yeah. And that was quick. No, I think he right in there. I don't know what, probably 50 yards? 45? Oh, 50, not even 50 yards. 45, 50, when I shot him? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, when you shot him? Yeah. <laughs> Put it right behind the shoulder. Sweet. Let's go get him. Good dog. What's that? Oh, shit. Female. Good deal. Heavy dog, too. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty heavy. Look how fat. Her belly. Brown. Good shooting. Put it right there on her. Um, uh, caliber in the uh, the 30s, the 30 caliber, the 35. Uh, that the there are a lot of guns that were designed to shoot pellets out of those. The typical Diablo I pellet. For a couple weeks on an air gun safari. Brought a few different guns. The, one of the guns I'm using today on the uh, the Springbuck hunt is the Evenex 357. It's the Rainstorm model. I've had this gun in 22 and 25. It's a it's a tack hammer. Very accurate. And the uh, the bigger bore um, holds true to the uh, family lineage. It's it's accurate. It's powerful. I feel pretty comfortable with this. One of the things I like about the uh, the Rainstorm series, and actually a lot of the Evenex guns, is the side lever cocking. You pop it, it pops open, cycles very quickly, uses a seven shot rotary magazine, holds a 70 grain uh, 357 pellets, and hits with authority. This is a, this is a hammer. Um, I feel very comfortable going up after a spring buck. Still going to keep it in to about 50, maybe 60 yards. Um, but uh, I'm sure this gun is going to do the job. Got that one. Springbrook Ram. I'm using the Evanex uh, 357, the Rainstorm. Uh, one of the uh, really uh, nice guns out of the uh, this Korean manufacturer stable of, of rifles. We shot this uh, this little Springbuck at 50 yards. I uh, shot him uh, up high on the shoulder. Uh, the pellet's a JSB. It's a 70 uh, 70 grand. Uh, it cleared. It went right through. Came out on the uh, the other side. Um, that really did the job. 
again, we wanted to get in inside of 50 or 60. I told uh, told Rob the pH I'm hunting with that I wanted didn't want to go outside of 60 if I didn't have to. The gun the gun could reach out further, but um, it's uh, the first time I've used it on the bigger stuff, and I just wanted to err on the, the side of safety. So we were we were staying in close. It took us about two hours to get that close. Um, if I could have taken a shot at 100, 125 yards, we could have shot uh, any of these ram in the last uh, last couple of hours. But we got in close, we did what we had to do, and it was a, a great hunt. This is the Daystate Wolverine 303, the most eagerly anticipated air gun for a generation. Now we've already seen the Wolverine at its world launch in the magnificent surroundings of Greystoke Castle. If you didn't see it, click here to watch the video. However, this is a rifle that's built for the field, and I know you're all eager to know if there really is any substance behind the hype. So today, we're going to put that hype to the test. Now, anyone that watches Team Wild TV regularly, or indeed reads my articles, will know that I don't really like to carry out reviews until I've used the gear in the field for a while. Only then can you make accurate judgments. What we're looking at today is the Wolverine's ballistic performance, up to and including 100 yards, accuracy and terminal energy. And we've got some pretty sophisticated equipment to help us. This is a Shooting Crony Gamma Series chronograph, which measures the speed of the pellet passing over its sensors. This allows us to accurately determine the pellet's kinetic energy. I fill the Wolverine's air reservoir to the 250 bar mark and we're ready to go. We know that the Wolverine produces 12 to 15 shots per charge, but that's not what we're here to measure today. Instead, we will be assessing the rifle over five shot groups, which is the capacity of the rotary magazine. But first, we need to fire five shots through the chronograph to check the velocity at the muzzle. As you can see, the Wolverine is firing the pellet at an average speed of 933.9 feet per second at the muzzle. This produces an average of 97.1 foot-pounds of energy, very close to Daystate's claims 100 simple. Texas. So, we're back in Texas, and we're back hunting air guns. Big bore air guns, to be precise. And in front of me is a Daystate Wolverine 303. Now this has taken some small game with me in environment, but not had a test on big game yet. Now it's a 303 calibre, fires a 50 grain JSB Emperor pellet at about a thousand feet per second and creates a hundred foot pounds of energy. Now while it was designed for bigger game, as I say, there's nothing really yet that's been able to test its metal. We've done plenty with rabbits, raccoons, foxes, and uh, obviously a wild boar headshot in Hungary. But as yet, we haven't tested anything on a heart lung shot. So what we're gonna to do today is we've come here to Cast Hunting Ranch in Texas, and we're going out after a seeker doe. Yeah, that's a seeker deer. Now here in Texas, any exotic deer or animal species can be hunted both at night and with an air gun. So what we're going to do is fit up our Daystate Wolverine with a Night Sight NS200 resplendent in its Realtree APG finish. And we're going to head out into the night and hopefully get close enough within 40 to 50 yards of taking our seeker doe. Now you'll also see on this night sight, there's a couple of other new additions. Firstly, this little pouch, which holds the battery pack onto the stock. And secondly, this compact battery pack, which is a lithium battery pack, it weighs about a quarter as much as the previous one does, and apparently it gives you twice as, as much usability. So we've got our center point, four to 16 by, 56 power class scope, Nightside NS200, 
day state Wolverine, all we need to do now is find ourselves a doe. We're out in the dead of night looking for a seeker doe for meat. There's plenty of seeker here on this ranch, although they kind of snuck in unnoticed during the recent floods. The seeker numbers have been growing steadily lately, and so the guys here have asked me to help them with a little bit of deer management. We're looking for a nice sweet doe for the pot, and they're looking to thin the numbers. We're a match made in heaven. And what better way to test the wolverine than here in the field? We're making our way around the estate in the truck, lamping the brush and bushes for the seeker herd. After a little searching, we find the seeker. At first they seem unfazed by the lamp, but it isn't long before they decide something's up and head into the thick stuff. We ditch the truck and head off on foot into the darkness. I set my sights on a seeker doe at the top of the bank. However, the tree branches are falling right in front of her. There's no way I'm taking a shot and risking a deflection, so I bide my time. But it isn't long before she heads into the thick brush and out of sight. We move deeper and deeper into the black of the night. Two eyes shine brightly in the distance, but there's plenty of foliage between me and her, which is causing a problem. And you can see these cicadera slightly bigger on the body than the blackback, but they're smaller than the fallow. That's the great thing about shooting with night vision. They're not entirely sure they are. They should be able to see just there, right in front of the Hartlong area now, where my crosshairs are. There's a branch sticking up. Now the very last thing I need to be doing is taking a shot through that, could have a ricochet, end up in the brisket, or worse still, end up in the gut. See, I don't think she could have picked a spot to stand with any better form of cover than that. I'm hoping what she's gonna do in a second is just turn, give me an opportunity, here she goes. As soon as she comes clear, I'm going to be able to take that shot. Before I can get locked onto her, she makes a dash for it, and so does a friend. I decide to wait in case any more sea can move across that clearing at the top of the bank. But there's a doe even closer than that. Moving across the bottom of the bank, she's in the open. She looks a little skittish and stands broadside in perfect position. I steady myself with a shot, pick my spot, place my finger gently on the trigger, but something spooks her and she's off again. She's moving, she's moving. I follow her as she bounces through the brush, always in cover. Then she slows, right out in the open and broadside once again. Okay. She stops for a second and I've got my shot. It's right in the engine room, exactly where I wanted it. She runs a little, but doesn't go too far. Perfect. Okay, sh straight down. Get in. Okay, let's go have a look. I head in to claim my seeker doe. Okay, so there we have it, our beautiful seeker doe. That's a good size, good size in the body actually. Um, spotted her from the truck as we were coming along, jumped out, night sight NS200. As you know, here in Texas, um, we can hunt deer either with night vision or with a spotlight. This is the first big game animal I think ever has been taken in the world. Um, state wolverine shot was about 40 yards and we flick her over let's see if we can see where the entry wound is here we go right just here as you can see perfectly placed um, just at the back of the back of the front leg 
So perfect shot placement straight in, um, but when we open her up, we'll find that it's a perfect heart lung shot. She ran maybe about eight or nine yards before falling down here in beautiful condition, lovely dark coat, great shape. Um, obviously not uh, an indigenous species here in Texas, uh, but still they make for pretty good eating. Lots of luscious grazing around in this valley. Um, and yeah, really, really pleased. All in all, a long day, a long night, and at least we've got some venison on the table. Look at that fabulous uh, Sika doe here in uh, Texas uh, with Cast Ranch and the awesome Day State Wolverine 303. So let's get it back because we've got some work to do. What a performance from the Day State Wolverine 303. Unbox. Got my Day State Wolverine 303, mid bore air rifle, 30 caliber. I've got my Hawk Sidewinder 30, 6 to 24 power mounted on it. This gun is a bolt action rifle, has a five shot magazine and the air tube, supplies enough air for 15 high powered shots. The gun will produce 100 foot pounds. It shoot in a 50 grain pellet. It's coming out about 930 to 950 feet per second. Extremely accurate, 100 yard accuracy is no problem. Follow along on the hunt and let's see what we can get. Good morning, sir. Your coffee? Tea. Tea. Oh, we spotted this stun buck over here, this ram. We're gonna try to make a stock on him. We're gonna head down here and try and keep the wind right and get in there. See if we can get close enough to get a shot with the wolverine. Well done, that is brilliant. You can't get better than that. Well, I got my diker with my trusty Wolverine 30 caliber in South Africa, and I finally got my stin buck. I've got the two little petite antelope that we were able to hunt here on the ranch. My Hawk Optics, fantastic. This thick brush here, they gave me the eagle eyes view right through it. It was a fantastic stock. We had to wait for a while to get the shot. Took him down. The 30 caliber air rifle did a fantastic job. Tell us a little bit more. You know, I don't know a lot about these animals. You live with them every day. What, tell me a little more about well, them. I think we can start off by saying that uh, it's quite an achievement to get a Dyker and a Stienbeck with a rifle, mm -hmm. let alone an air rifle. Um, I think it's one of a, one, one or two of the animals, the Dyker and the Stienbeck are very very underrated in terms of hunting or game and a lot of the guys overlook them purely on size but I mean if you look at their features they're, they're absolutely fantastic animals to stalk in close. You are definitely right they are a lot of fun to hunt and I do have a new respect for them. The horns on the Stienbeck you can see they're more sort of parallel than upright and um, you know they don't have any shape like the Dyker does and they're very smooth and sort of pins. The darker, he's got a lot more ridges on his horns and he's obviously a lot grayer in color, slightly bigger in body size. This little animal is just, it's gorgeous. I mean, they're beautiful. Definitely going on my trophy wall. And how good are these for eating? They're also good. Darker, Stienbeck, Springbeck, all very good. And I must say, I'm very impressed with the power of this rifle. Good, good, I'm glad. I'm very impressed, it's doing the job very nicely. Thank you, Rob. Another, another great stock and another great animal, and I can't thank you enough. 
Perfect. You made my experience over here over the top. I'm Fantastic. Happy happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. My tracker Tondo, he has been absolutely amazing. He's done all of our packing for us. He's watched our game for us while we try and make a stock. He's done a great job. Thank you, Tondo. Ingorse. In Ingorse? Ingorse. Pasipindayo. Ubete target tackle straight. Utubulega gotle. Ingorse. Thank you very much. Hi and welcome back to Air Gun Only Adventures. This adventure takes us back to South Africa, one of my favorite places to hunt. After a great flight, we are back in South Africa again for another safari. Back to meet our good friends, Rob Dale and Andrew Meyer with Hans Lowe Safaris. This hunt, we're gonna be pursuing the Springbuck Antelope. And for the Springbuck hunt, I chose my Daystate Wolverine 303. This gun has been a trusted hunting partner of mine on many, many trips around the United States. And this is its second trip back to South Africa. Follow along on this adventure and see how we do on the Springbuck Antelope. This was my last and final day on Hanslow Safaris. We were going out for the fourth time trying to get a spring buck. These animals run in big herds. They have very good eyesight and very good hearing. And when you're working with 50 to 100 animals in a herd, it's extremely difficult to get close enough to get a shot. I knew I needed to be inside that 80 yard mark with my 303, and it proved to be a test over the four day period. But by golly, it all finally came together. The wind was blowing really bad this day. We had 35, 40 mile an hour crosswinds gusting. It never stopped. We had several blown stalks, as you'll see. This particular herd right here, they come up from our left and surprised us. And I guess they caught my movement and they blew right past us. They went flying by. So we moved our setup. The only place we had a setup was a bee sting bush. I mean, this thing was terrible. The wind was blowing. These bee sting bushes were slapping us all over our bodies. We had to back up in them for cover because we had all these eyes. This herd of spring buck come up over the ridge. Well, they decided to bed down just out of range. We waited and we waited. A few got up, we started to get excited. They moved 15, 20 yards and lay back down. An hour and a half we sat here waiting to get this shot. Now I'm trying to figure out, is this really worth it? We just need to go home and be done with this. I'm not gonna get a spring buck with my Wolverine. Well, Lady Luck shined on us. The whole herd got up and very slowly started feeding. Finally, everything came together. I was steady on the sticks. Everything worked right. We held off for the wind, pulled the trigger. Perfect shot. Right through both shoulders, center punched his heart. He jumped and lunged. He ran 15 or 20 yards did a little spin, and he was done. The Day State Wolverine did a perfect job. My trusted partner on many hunts, my Wolverine 303. I got my spring buck in South Africa. Let's go take a look at my buck. I had to keep waiting, that wind kept blowing me off. Oh, look at that, what a trophy. <laughs> look at that, right in the shoulder. That's a nice little rim. As we approached my spring buck, boy, the adrenaline started to flow, my heart started to pound. Four days of trying, and I finally succeeded. What a beautiful animal. These little spring buck are absolutely gorgeous. They range in about 60 to 80, 85 pounds, and that's pretty much the upper limit for the 30 caliber air rifle within 80 yards. My Daystate Wolverine 303 has always performed flawlessly for me. But now, Daystate has come out with the Wolverine 2. The Wolverine 2 has a different style stock. It's got ergonomic finger grooves in the pistol grip. It fits your hand like a glove. They've done a little redesigning in the breech block, mostly cosmetic, but the great thing about it, it's a different platform. Now it comes with a carbon fiber, 480 cc bottle. By doing that, they have dropped the weight drastically, giving it more volume 
so there's more of a shot count. This is the new Wolverine 2 303. Look for it on more of our exciting hunt videos. Until next time, shoot straight and hit your target.